Uh, welcome tonight. Um, uh, this evening, I just wanted to uh, take a quick tour uh, to you about uh, DeFi and um, talking about uh, what is the status, what was uh, pretty much uh, what happened in uh, 2019, and uh, what will be maybe in uh, 2020, and maybe later uh, about uh, regulatory and compliance. Um, so it would be, what be more technical, but it will be in a highlight about what it what happened and what would be uh, regarding the low regulatory and uh, compliance stuff. To just to give you um, what uh, what is my thinking about what uh, will be next. So um, I'm from Safefish. Uh, we are leading a validator, and I also we are a model operator on, uh, for the. Uh, we are now up validating on uh, uh, Cosmos, uh, the Cyrus Net, the Kusama, Loom, uh, Aeon, the Aeon Network, uh, and uh, also Kava. And uh, we are also um, starting to validate us in uh, several other new projects that will be coordinated uh, in uh, this year, or let's see, I don't know, because sometimes projects just push and uh, pop up and then uh, stop to work. So, Let's see. Um, so, 2019 was uh, the, the year of DeFi. Um, I think that every one of us, we, uh, we know what is DeFi, so it's a decentralized uh, finance, and uh, it's supposed to be the, the alternative to the traditional finance that we have uh, so far. So, um, we can see that uh, uh, about borrowing and lending, we had a maker down that was, uh, let's say, the, the big player uh, on, the, on, the, on the market, and, uh, except from uh, one beach that happened to maker down uh, several uh, months ago, probably it was uh, last year. And um, on this side, we have, uh, as you can see, we have uh, on the borrowing and lending, we have a, a, a top player that uh, uh, we had in 2019 that uh, went. Uh, um, and they, they took a, a lot of markets in 2019. It was the MakerDAO, Compound Protocol, Google, Dharma. And um, for exchange trading and investing, we have the centralized exchange that we have the, let's say, call it top of the, the big player, that is Binance. With Phoenix, Coinbase, and Kraken, we have, of course, we have several uh, of the central exchange, but uh, this is the most uh, important and uh, also the one that has the biggest trading volume for sure. Then we have the, the decentralized exchange that uh, we have also here. We have a lot of names there, but uh, if you look also in uh, on the um, Interscan, if you look on the trading volume, Uniswap was the one that uh, recently. Uh, uh, Push it at the top of, of the trade wall, so it's uh, one of the most. And we have also Keeper and uh, other uh, decentralized exchanges. And uh, of course, we have uh, UMA and Synthetics also for uh, synthetic access, uh, assets. Uh, and of course, we have uh, also just staking. Um, staking is, a, is a, a part of DeFi, of, and we have uh, individual staking where people can uh, stake and delegate uh, the tokens to validators. Then we have, uh, um, we saw uh, recently in the late 2019 that uh, the big, uh, big centralized exchange, for example, Binance, Coinbase, and Kraken um, um, created validators on uh, Cosmos and Tezos, and uh, they started to propose to uh, their user. Uh, you can log in directly in the exchange and you can stake uh, directly from there. You don't have to uh, create another wallet and uh, delegate from a wallet. You don't have to think about uh, anything else. But uh, they try to, um, let's say, uh, take the market, but uh, it's not yet like this. They are still, uh, um, let's say, adjusting the, uh, how they promote also uh, about marketing. And then we have, uh, um, also, the last one is a non-exchange custodian that is uh, uh, some independent project that uh, they are creating some platform that people can uh, stake and delegate from directly from there. So um, this was uh, quite a bit uh, mostly what happened in the 2019 about DeFi. I don't know if you can see directly. This is a, an image that uh, um, 
talks pretty much by itself. That was taken in May 2019. And this was the interaction from about the user and the protocols in the DeFi spaces. You can, I don't know if you can read uh, in uh, there is MakerDAO, um, Compound, uh, Uniswap. This is an interaction between uh, each protocol and the user. And uh, if you can see here, it was in, in August, so three months later, you can see that uh, the market is uh, exploded a bit. And there, you can see also that there is the synthetics there, um, other several new projects. Uh, there is also Ocul there, that is a prediction market that comes into the, um, into the market. But we can see that also the interaction between the protocols uh, it multiplies a lot, and uh, there is a, a very huge uh, trading volume and, um, and also traffic between uh, each protocol. So uh, we can see that DeFi effectively in the 2019 uh, exploded. So what 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 it means? Uh, uh, this is uh, the same thing that I said before, so I can uh, make a skip. So, um, what means uh, about uh, risk management and regulatory? I mean, uh, normal people that uh, think about uh, traditional finance, for example, um, we, we can say that uh, there is not much transparency. Uh, I don't know how, how many of you uh, open in a bank account, in traditional bank account, when you go you have uh, maybe 20 pages of uh, terms uh, and condition and you don't even read it because uh, it's too much and uh, you don't know what is you are signing so there is not a lot of transparency there so they have a proprietary system so you don't know what is behind your banks until they breach the bank probably and uh, and of course um, I wrote here fully regulated but uh, I was a bit uh, uh, it's secure to say fully regulated, but uh, let's say uh, officially fully regulated uh, um, uh, fine, traditional finance, uh, where we have the SEA, and there is a lot of uh, regulatory um, authorities that are regulating each uh, country. For example, in Germany, you have the BaFin, uh, I don't know if it's correct, but uh, uh, mostly the, the finance is, it has to be controlled. There is no way to escape, but uh, we know that uh, every time there is a, a way to escape, but mostly the traditional finance uh, has to be regulated. You have to sign everything. If you are moving funds between banks or wire transfer, you know there's uh, some country don't like cash, for example. So that's why I say fully regulated. On the other side, we have decentralized finance. Um, the trade-off of the decentralized finance, so talking about uh, risk management, is that that could be a smart contract, but so we don't know uh, effectively if the company that uh, produces smart contract uh, audited that, that piece of code. At least it's not uh, um, effectively listed on the website, and you know that it's audited from a third party, and uh, it's not the same company that audited, the, of course, the code. Uh, we know that there is a liquidity risk from decentralized finance because. Uh, typically in traditional finance, if you open a bank account, you know that uh, the, the bank is insured or backed by the government, so you know that pretty much your funds are secure. Let's say that it's not uh, always like this, but uh, it should. And uh, of course, I wrote there that it's partially regulated, because uh, uh, for example, in some countries, there, there are growing and, uh, and also they are um, creating new law and, uh, 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 regarding the crypto company and also exchanges and something like this. Um, so it, I wrote here that it's partially regulated because uh, uh, you know better than me that some country like, I don't know, uh, Singapore or uh, some offshore uh, other country that is not uh, completely regulated, they are uh, in, in the blacklist, for example, for the uh, European Union and uh, other uh, uh, big uh, country. But um, at the end of the at the end of the the flow, we can see that uh, there is a piece of uh, regulation that is the anti-money laundering that is the key, and that is the the main uh, uh, part that uh, all the world is working and fighting the, to uh, avoid that. Uh, Funds are moved from uh, uh, terrorism or uh, crime for fraud, etc. 
So, um, talking about uh, the anti-money laundering, um, recently, at the beginning of the month, the, the European Union um, taking into um, uh, force, they are enforcing now um, the, the Fifth Amendment Directive that was created in 2000, uh, it was drafted in 2016, that was uh, um, written in the in the law, in, uh, in the regulation proposal in 2018, and now is uh, into um, into action from uh, the 10th of January this year, and um, they are pretty much trying to um, take control also of the crypto company. And uh, I just uh, highlighted here in bold that uh, they want to try to limit the anonymity related to bill per and wallet providers and also for prepaid card, for example. Uh, this uh, causes, uh, uh, for example, if you read uh, also in, uh, I guess, the CoinDesk and the other uh, crypto news uh, website, that uh, several crypto startups had to shut down the, the business because of this, because uh, they had to produce a lot of paper, ask to the their user to uh, give them a lot of information to comply to this regulation. And uh, it was uh, too much for them, they, uh, they just uh, shut down the, the business. And uh, they want to increase the transparency between uh, uh, who is the, the legal entities. Uh, they want to give also a better access to information via centralized bank account register. This is pretty huge, uh, because uh, they are trying to centralize at the end. So, um, uh, there, there is also um, another one that is not listed here, but uh, they are also trying to give uh, more power to each financial financial authority on, in each country, for example. So um, they are treating, uh, delegating to, for example, to the Germany financial authority to uh, check and uh, look for uh, this kind of things and uh, to enforce also. And um, they can also um, uh, they can also do a fine, for example, in a, in a other two countries there is already some fine that if you not comply to this you can also pay up to, to 200,000 euros, something like this. So you can imagine that for uh, some startups it's uh, anyways uh, the finish of the business. business. Yeah, uh, this is uh, going back to regulatory and compliance. Um, this is the traditional finance that uh, it should be this report that is uh, public and transparent, uh, so you can check if uh, they are um, treating your data in a safety way or not. And then uh, the last part is the, the GDPR, the Privacy Shield, and uh, several other other um, uh, regulation that is. Uh, it's delegated to each country to have uh, its own data protection law. So you know that this part of GPR, for example, is uh, that was also in the 2018 uh, the, the most uh, uh, important thing that happened because uh, also this uh, regulation uh, uh, shut it down uh, several companies because they cannot comply or they they don't they were not able to uh, comply with that because technical uh, problem with this. And um, I'm just uh, mentioning this because, uh, for example, if, uh, if you look at the decentralized finance, it's, uh, it, should be, it should be pretty much the same because uh, we have uh, each step that can be the same. But the only problem is that uh, a lot of these uh, points could be too much uh, work for the, for example, for a small company, uh, ISO, ISO 27000, for example, it's a, it's a very long journey that could take uh, probably one year, so not all the company can uh, uh, get the certificates for sure, but they can work to, to show that they are following the, this best practice. So it's always good anyway. And, um, and it should be like this in the same way. I mean, it's not that is, uh, has to be, it's just uh, the way I, I try to visualize uh, what will be in the next future, because if, if I want to try to uh, overlap and uh, take a lot of uh, people uh, out from traditional finance and not uh, rely on banking account, uh, this could be something that uh, could be a potential uh, um, scenario, but uh, it's not like this, but uh, 
this will help a lot uh, also um, the new company that uh, are doing uh, a lot of business with, because for example for ISO 27000 there is a lot of exchanges that uh, they are trying to comply and uh, get the certificate. I know that, uh, for example, Binance uh, has it, uh, uh, probably Gemini and uh, another few more, but uh, it's something that uh, is still uh, um, in work in progress because it, it's a it's a, a strong, uh, um, not strong, but it's a difficult journey because, uh, for example, in South Korea, um, after the Itam uh, Arc, uh, there, is, there is now a, a kind of hype that uh, every exchange and uh, a business want to comply to ISO to get a better security. Uh, here you can see, for example, that uh, there was a, a, a lot of increase of uh, requests and uh, certification during uh, all these years. Uh, for example, the Asia is uh, the top uh, ones. That, uh, is, uh, that got the certification. China and Japan is uh, the most one. And uh, Japan is uh, one of the countries that uh, is keeping up with the ISO 27 since uh, very, very long ago, because it's a, it's a country that has uh, strictly regulated. Um, but if you can see, there is a, an increase during this year that uh, uh, most was caused by, uh, by, uh, by a lot of uh, data breach that happened in the past, so everyone was trying to uh, get uh, into again into business, but uh, they they also was trying to uh, demonstrate to uh, to the government that they, they are doing good. And uh, some other is uh, is because of the GDPR, because uh, if you are uh, certificated with the ISO 27000, you are pretty much already uh, okay with the GPR because mostly of the IT uh, uh, points that are uh, in the GDPR is uh, it's uh, mapped with the uh, correctly with the ISO 27000. So um, last things that I, I want to uh, share that is uh, the key part is uh, there is uh, some point in the ISO 27000 that is talking about uh, supplier relationship. And uh, it's, uh, it's uh, also mentioned in the, in the GDPR. Um, what it means? That uh, if uh, I'm trying to uh, reach the certification, I need to take care also about my third party and partner that they are interconnected with me or I'm exchanging the data. So that means that uh, if I'm not auditing or something happens on a third party that is interacting with me, and I'm certified, and as, uh, I am, then uh, I, uh, I have a data breach, I'm responsible and not uh, the third party because uh, it was my duty to also audit uh, the third party that works with me. So that means uh, if, you, if we think, uh, for example, about uh, um, change and node operators, uh, uh, and for example, uh, we talk about uh, synthetics, uh, it should be, for example, that synthetics got the certification for ISO 27000, but at some point we we'll start to ask it to each third party that they are interconnected to be compliant or to demonstrate that they are doing or following the best practice. So this is uh, something that uh, also was uh, uh, in, um, introduced by the GDPR, because uh, the GDPR also said that uh, if you are uh, protecting the, the personal data of uh, of your customers, but there is a, a chain or a, there is a third party or partner that is not uh, uh, compliant for, with the GDPR, you are not compliant. So this is uh, your duty. And uh, the same is for ISO 27000. So um, in my mind, uh, I, when I think about uh, DeFi, I'm thinking that uh, at some point uh, there will be um, something that uh, could be a little more about business and marketing because uh, if I try, I will market myself, my company, that oh, we are certified, and blah, 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 and so on. So at some point, uh, I, I will need to take, take care, for example, uh, about my cloud provider, because it's a supplier. But for sure, Amazon, it's a more, uh, it's not uh, behind me, but it's more uh, forward. So they are, in 27,000, they have uh, a lot of other certification. I, I don't have to go to, to Bezos and say, okay, 
demonstrate that you are certified because you're not, uh, this is the part. But uh, it's more about uh, um, the small business, and the, the small company that we are, for example, in the crypto space that uh, interact, for example, in DeFi. There is this kind of interaction between the protocol. It's, uh, it's uh, not uh, uh, strictly one-to-one -one because uh, we know that uh, that our chain is a kind of different between uh, interaction between uh, API or normal web services, but uh, it's something that probably could uh, could happen, and um, it could drive probably also the, all the market. I don't know. It's something that uh, we need to think about and uh, um, yeah, doing the best to uh, for sure secure our data and uh, and be compliant with the regulation because uh, the government for sure. We try to block and tackle or control, as we know that, uh, for example, the last uh, Fifth Amendment that they want to try to centralize the, the data. And, uh, it's, let's say, it's not so good, but we need to um, understand how we can um, bypass this kind of uh, regulation, but doing uh, in the correct ways. And uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty much uh, what <laughs> I wanted to try to explain. Uh, I, if you have questions uh, later, I, I will be happy. And uh, I hope that was not so complicated, but it was just a kind of a overview to see something that was not technical and uh, about defined. Thank you.